Hello and welcome. This is Dermist Mondays. Woo! Yo, I'm Ali. I'm Craig. And this week we have a very special guest all the way from Glasgow, our very good friend Stuart Matheson from Glasgow band Layaway. Yo, Stuart. So Stuart, we've done a few gigs together in the past. We've done uh, King Tut's when we were reality TV and we've done obviously the Barrowlands Pride Glasgow event, which was awesome. Why don't you just introduce yourself, your band and give us a wee quick bio, a wee quick rundown. Yeah. I am Stuart from Levy, a guitarist, singer. We've been about for about four years, four and a half years. Um, we've done UK tours. We played all over Glasgow. The only venue that's left is the Hydro. <laughs> Barrowlands is like the, 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 the pinnacle as far as I'm concerned. But um, quick bio. So there's me, Stuart Matheson, vocals guitar, the most important one. <laughs> there's uh, Rob Lee's guitar, uh, he's the guitarist, uh, back in vocalist. There's Ewan Wilkie on drums and our latest addition, Fraser McDonald on bass. Oh yeah, we know Fraser. We're very blessed to have him, man. Straight away, his style yeah. of bass playing is massive distortions, crazy sounds, and he's up the dusty end of the neck sort of thing, man, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I like that. It's provocative. <laughs> up the dusty end of the neck. I like that. Yeah. Quick bio of the band. Um, basically, the band started with me. Um, I played that band for years as a bass player originally and I just wanted to continue doing music you know what I mean I was at the kind of later end of my 20s that's really interesting because that's what happened with me like with Crash My Model Car and then when that stopped went to do lead guitar and vocals with Augusta Fireball and my guitarist Rob I met him out in a night out um, which for anyone that knows him is like no surprise because he used to be a bit of a barfly in our local area sort of thing so ah, yeah. I basically just got talking to him acoustic guitar stuff and just seeing I was doing this kind of project and he said, yeah, but for that. So we just started jamming and we literally jammed for three or four months and then we got uh, looking for a drummer and Ewan was the first drummer we, we, we auditioned. He sent us a, a demo of him playing Uptown Funkman <laughs> and as soon as he played, like within three seconds, I just looked at Rob and went like that. We need to get this guy. He's the guy. He's the man. Yeah. Since then, we've literally had like a revolving door of bass players, man. So um, <laughs> that's the kind of early <laughs> beginnings of like Leary. As you said before, we were reality TV. We did our first gig with you guys at King Tut's. Mm. And we, we ended up headlining that show because it was our first gig and we'd sold loads of tickets. So we were like super proud of Because you sold more tickets than us. <laughs> yes! <laughs> After that, we kind of played every place in Glasgow. We've done a UK tour played the Barlands, done some session work for BBC, national radio play, all that sort of other good stuff. Every single step I've ever kind of thought about doing with a band has been like, oh it'd be amazing to do that, it'd be amazing to do the next step above that. And then the longer you go and the more kind of doors you knock on, you, you don't believe these things are going to happen until someone says, oh do you guys fancy doing this? And then it, it happens, and that's it. Yeah. You, just need to be you just need to be prepared to do the work for it man. You're constantly on so, it though, and you're, you're hungry for it, so you, you make it happen. Take my hat off to you for that. You see, you're constantly hitting up social media and all these sorts of things. So um, you're definitely yeah, thanks, man. doing all the right things, <laughs> being persistent <laughs> and willing to silence the naysayers. As Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> says. I know you're a bit of a gear guy. I know that you collect uh, recording equipment, you're into your microphones. What's the best bits of equipment that you've used over the years and what have you bought recently? Best bits of equipment over the years. So it's one of the very first things. It's actually the first thing I bought off of eBay in 2003, I think. And we're I actually going had back to here. Yeah. We're going. We're going way <laughs> back. So like, are, are, we, are we talking di dial up here? Are we talking? <laughs> Like, I literally like I had to open a PayPal account to buy this man, right? So that's how early this was. <laughs> Basically, it's this uh, bass, and it's a 1975 Gibson Ripper. Oh yes, was, nice. Which was the first thing I bought off of eBay for 400 quid. And there's a band called Cave In who were out in the early 2000s, kind of progressive mm -hmm. rock. I emailed him and says, listen, what is that bass your bass player's using in the video for Anchor? Months and months went past, and then all of a sudden I got an email back, uh, just to let you know, this is Caleb, uh, the bass player from Cave In, um, and he told me all about, he'd used that the guitar in the video, but he actually used the kind of sister guitar, the grabber, during all the recordings and stuff. Ah, oh, right, okay. So that's why I've got that bass, because I didn't, I, I was like going around McCormack's music at the time in Glasgow and all these other music shops looking for 
that bass in that video and I couldn't find it anywhere. And you will never ever be able to find a guitar like that ever again. They stopped making them in 1985, you know what I mean? So yeah. they're, 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 pretty rare, they're pretty rare pieces, man. What's the, th- what's, what's the three best bits of gear that you've got? Desert Island stuff. Have you, have you had to go on a Desert Island tomorrow? Regardless of whether it all worked together. <laughs> there's electricity on the island, isn't there? Yeah, there's a Mac and, <laughs> and a wee interface. Yeah, 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 there's a Mac and an interface. Set of Neumanns. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I would probably take like uh, an acoustic guitar, a bass, and a reverb pedal because I, I love to dive into a deep pool of reverb. Uh, you said there was headphones, surely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's not actually an island. It's Abbey Road. <laughs> uh, it's a studio. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the three pieces I gave you that I'm, that I'm so proud of in this place is uh, it was that guitar. I bought a, a 1976 Yamaha small mixing mm. console, fully analog. I'm hoping and running things like drums through it, guitars through it, just to give it a wee bit of warmth. And the third thing is my GMP, which I bought last year, which I've wanted for years. I've wanted a, a Marshall. Nobody really wants a. Nobody really wants a Marshall, do they? <laughs> <laughs> After hearing how loud it is, no. It, it, it's a modern, it's a kind of remake, it's a reissue, but it's as close as I'm going to get because I'm not going to spend thousands and thousands on a, you know, 1959 Marshall because it's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. At least not to the missus' knowledge, anyway. <laughs> so, when we were playing with reality TV, we had a few faux pas, shall we say. Uh, we got billed as reality <laughs> check one time. It was a, a poster they'd made for a week. We were up, people thought we were called reality check. <laughs> yeah, reality check. That is so much more apt, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Another show we turned up, they, had, they didn't have a PA. They just had a big amp that they thought was a PA, but it was just an amp. <laughs> and then sure. another gig we played, um, sorry to name and shame you, but uh, the record factory, and Byers Road in Glasgow. They were playing and they just cornered off half the room and just pulled yeah. a curtain in front of us. Yeah. There was people getting into yeah. it and they were like, oh, these guys are yeah. alright. And then, poof, We'd curtain. done the sound check. Yeah, we'd done the sound check and there was people in the bar. It was quite busy and they, were, they loved the sound check and they were like, oh, yes, it's great. And then when it came to doors open, the, the sound guy drew a big curtain yeah. across. They do that to separate the bar from the gig and then they can, then they can charge money into the gig apparently, but it's like... Yeah, you can hear, hear a PA through a curtain. <laughs> yeah, no, and and crazy, and nobody, like, and nobody came to the gig. I know. <laughs> they, were all, they were all behind the curtain. <laughs> so, have you had any similar band fails? to that effect. We played a, a bar and it was like the probably the hardest bar I've ever played in and the main faux pas was that there was no running water or toilets in the ladies toilet in any place in the venue. Not because the, um, they had, you know, ran out of water or the plumbing had went defunct or frozen. No, the lavatories were all smashed up and that was in the ladies, so you can imagine what the gents was like. They actually closed a curtain on us in that place and then that in that place as well, because basically if you didn't close the curtain, the, the patrons that were wanting to listen to like Brown Eyed Girl and all that sort of stuff in the jukebox <laughs> went off their nut. And they didn't they didn't like listen to some punk band from like Alexandria. Yep. So that's that, that's probably the biggest gig fail. But we still get paid, that was the main thing, we get paid for that gig. That's a bonus. And it was the it was it, it, it was the quickest I've left a gig ever, man. Like the, <laughs> Let's get out of here. The working man's pub. Uh, yeah, uh, take the money and run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was probably one of the worst gigs you've ever played. What about one of the best gigs you've ever done with Layaway? The best gig that for me personally was we played. We supported a band called Larkins last year at King Tuts, and it was a sold out King Tuts, and it was like yeah. the, the crowd, the crowd of our band disappear. It's mm. it's not really the same as a sold out show. The full crowd was there from the start of the show, so even the band that went first seen yeah. like seen like three hundred people in front of them, man. You know it was insane. It was like a plus fourteens, and there was a lot, a lot of kind of sixteen, seventeen year old people there, and it was just amazing because they were all just into the music. I think there should be more over fourteen plus gigs. Like I think that, that, that there's so many young. people people that you know they're allowed to go out their parents will drop them off they'll go and see a show they're, they're into music Aye, at that age no, definitely, you know definitely. They're, they're, they, they, they want to go and see shows and, and that, that's the type of demographic that'll go and buy tickets there definitely needs to be more those types of gigs that are allowed and yep. it's really difficult to do a, a, an over 14s plus gig and maybe even in Glasgow because I think usually you book out a venue and it's maybe an extra £150 if you want to do an over, yep. a, an over 14s gig because they've got to get more staff yep. on or, or whatnot yeah. so it can open my 
my eyes yeah. to see what could be done in the sense of like try to like kind of connect with people and stuff like that you know what I mean so we've done some vlogs about daily rituals and different things that we do do you get any daily rituals you'd like to share with us or um, tips for the, getting in the zone things that you like to do out with music and there's a massive massive positive effect on exercising and exercising to quite a high degree and for me that took the form of running in the last maybe few years for me like pushing myself um, physically and running like maybe twice three times a week mm. has really helped me focus on other things and mm. um, I think a big thing about it is like see if you can schedule stuff and actually write down a schedule but stick to it like but give yourself time to watch Netflix and give yourself time to do rubbish things because you can't deny yourself that you can't just work all the time she'll burn yourself out so you've been recording some uh, material have you guys got anything new in the pipeline so lately in the last few months we've been writing 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 we've got our own practice space that helps a lot and it's it's local to three of us there's like no phone signal in the place as well which is a big bonus but what we can do is go in there and just switch off from the outside world and just focus on what you're in there to do man we've got a single release um, it's kind of it's like the end of, the, of a chapter with our band um, it's the last single that basically our last bass player was involved with uh, Finite it's a song that I'm really proud of it's really really personal to me that's kind of what this band is about kind of big alternative rock and specifically for me anyway I like that kind of I, I want to kind of feel hairs in the back of the, my, my arms sort of thing standing up yeah I'm looking forward to hearing the new stuff and seeing how it's progressed so Stuart it's been great having you on thanks very much for being part of uh, Dermas Mondays you've been our first ever guest Yep, thank you very much for having me guys. It's been an absolute pleasure, man. And uh, can you give us some can you can you give us some links to some layaway socials? Yep, so it's all layaway officials, so that's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, it's all layaway official. Um other than that, um layaway music, you'll find us on YouTube, Spotify, all that other good stuff. Um and that's it, yeah. Apart from that, when gigs start up again, come and see us live. Hopefully with their mist. Just like to say a massive thank you, you guys, man. You're doing a like amazing job. You're doing a cracking channel as well, man. And you know, I appreciate you giving me the time tonight. So thank you so much for letting us come on and you know do the layaway thing. It's uh, it means a lot. And you've been watching Dermis Mondays. Bye.